Hello students, today we are going to learn about animals. We are going to start with the characteristics of animals and we are going to differentiate them with characteristics of plants. We are going to look at classification of these animals, how they reproduce, we are going to see the different adaptations that these animals have and also their role in food chain, food web and energy flow in the ecosystem. So shall we start? So we will start with differentiating between plants and animals, fine? So tell me one by one, do plants produce their own food? Yes. Do animals produce their own food? No. They need to consume other plants and animals, isn't it? So plants are called as autotrophs. Autotrophs, they are also known as producers. However, Animals which are known to consume other plants and animals, they are called as heterotrophs, also called as consumers. Plants are unicellular or multicellular? They are multicellular, made up of many cells. Unicellular as in bacteria, they are made up of single cells, but plants are multicellular. How about animals? Animals are also made up of many cells, that is they are multicellular. Both are multicellular organisms. How do plants reproduce? They will either produce seeds or else vegetatively or vegetatively by root stem or leaf. How about animals? Do they also produce seeds? No. They lay eggs or give birth to young ones. Do plants show movements? The roots moving towards water is a movement. The shoot moving towards sunlight is a type of movement. However, the movement will be at one stationary place only, isn't it? So, any which ways, they are known to show movements. How about animals? Do they also show movements? Yes, of course they show movements. Plus, they are able to move from one place to another. Not like the plant. Plant will only show movements. But the animals will show movements as well as Locomotion, moving from one place to another is known as locomotion. Move to another place. Next, response to their surroundings. Do plants show response to their surroundings? Yes, all living organisms are known to show response to their surroundings. Plants also show? Animals also show. However, in plants the response is very slow. But in animals the response will be very quick. So, show slow response to surroundings. And these, they show fast response. So, here we have completed the differences between plants and animals. Quick recap. Plants are autotrophs. That is, they can produce their own food. Animals are heterotrophs. They will depend on other plants and animals for food. Next. Plants will reproduce by seeds or vegetatively through different parts of their body like root, shoot, leaf. However, animals will either lay eggs or give rise to young ones. Plants show movements, animals show movements plus locomotion as well. Plants show slow responses to any external stimulus but animals show quick responses to their surroundings. Next, we are going to look at classification of animals. So, all the animals that you see around you may it be the different birds, then snake, alligators, uh, you have monkey, dog, cat, frog, fishes, cockroaches, different types of worms, octopus, prawns, what else, jellyfish, starfish, the sponges, all these animals can be broadly divided into two categories. 
on the basis of whether or not they have a backbone clear you know what a backbone is right what is a backbone backbone which we also call as the vertebral column extending from here to here it's also called as the vertebral column spine backbone most of the animals in this world do not have a backbone for example the worms how they wriggle right the cockroach does it have a backbone like us no right so most of these animals do not have a backbone the others have it the ones that do not have backbone they are known as invertebrates and the ones that have a backbone they are called as vertebrates can you tell me why these guys are called as vertebrates what is so vertebral about them they have what do they have they have vertebral column vertebral column which we also call as the backbone also called as the spine these guys have it and in vertebrates means without the vertebral column so we will write do not have backbone and these guys have a backbone now we have to state examples examples will include invertebrates like snail worms cockroach then jellyfish jellyfish what else octopus starfish sponges and vertebrates include examples such as mammals mammals including human humans are mammals monkey dog all these furry animals they are called mammals then birds all the birds will be vertebrates apart from them reptiles reptiles are vertebrates examples will include snake crocodile these are vertebrates apart from that we have the frogs that are vertebrates fishes all the fishes are vertebrates frogs are also called as amphibians so after this we are going to look at the invertebrates and the vertebrates in more detail so let us begin with invertebrates invertebrates like just now we discussed they do not have a backbone so from the different examples of invertebrates that we just discussed the sponges the different kinds of worms jellyfishes starfish snails octopus cockroaches which are the most abundant of all uh, these invertebrates is that they are insects insects are so abundant okay uh, the others numbers are significantly less compared to insects insects are most abundant the reason for uh, their vast number is because these insects have a hard kind of a covering around them for instance you must have seen the cockroach right that tough kind of a shell kind of brown thing that it has on top of it like almost acting like a skeleton to protect it that skeleton exoskeleton that skeleton is made up of this substance called as chitin okay they have a hard protective covering that covering is made of this substance made up of this substance which is called as chitin what is it called chitin it is because of this that uh, they are more resilient more resistant to environmental changes and eventually over the years of evolution they have managed to survive and increase their number of species clear so 
when we are going to study about invertebrates, we will be taking into consideration insects only to study about all the invertebrates. Let us take example of the cockroach. So here is a rough body of the cockroach that I have drawn. As you can see its body, this is the top view. This body is divided into three parts. These three parts are called as the head. This part, triangular part will be called as the thorax. And this broad part is called as the abdomen. So you can say in general the body of the invertebrates is divided into head, thorax and abdomen. Insects are known to have three pairs of legs, three on this side, three on the other side, right? These are the legs and as you can see they are arising from the thorax part. So what will you write? three pairs of legs and these legs are also very special type of legs they are not like ordinary legs they are like you know made up of joints 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 okay this is one joint then this joint is jointing to this one then this joint is joining to this one like that okay such kind of legs that they have they are called as jointed feet So three pairs of such kind of jointed feet it has. Apart from this they will also have two pairs of wings. If they have wings they will have two pairs of wings. So this is about their body structure. Body is divided into three parts head, thorax and abdomen. They have three pairs of legs and wings may be present or they may be absent. If they are present then the wings will be in two pairs. Let us write down here may or may not be present. This is all about invertebrates. Now we move on to the study of the vertebrates. We will be studying the vertebrates and the five types of vertebrates in more detail. Now we are going to look at the vertebrates. The vertebrate that we are going to start with is fish. Just like any other vertebrate, the fishes also have a vertebral column. Fish also scientifically called as Pisces. What are the different features of the fishes which sets them apart from the other vertebrates? So they are the uh, members that live in water. The other vertebrates are terrestrial, mostly terrestrial, right? And for living in water, they have several adaptations in them. For instance, they have fins for swimming, different types of fins they have. These are called their fins. This fin especially is called as the tail fin. It's used for changing directions used for changing directions in water or for steering as we call them different types of fins are present for swimming next how do they breathe special structures which are called as gills gills are present behind this this part here Behind this, the gills are present inside their body. They will use them for breathing. What do we do? What do we use for breathing? We use lungs for breathing. They use gills. They do not have lungs. Their body is covered with scales. Why do they need scales? To protect themselves from water. Otherwise, their body is going to absorb a lot of water and that will not be good for them. Also, water has this rotting effect on things. So, they would like to protect themselves from water by keeping themselves water resistant, waterproof. So, their body is covered with scales. Do they lay eggs or do they give birth to young ones? 
so they lay eggs dolphin whale is not a fish they are mammals okay they give birth to young ones the dolphins and the whales are not fishes they give birth to young ones we are talking about fishes here anything that lives in water cannot be called as fishes remember that so the actual technical fishes they do not give birth to young ones they lay only eggs clear give examples of some fishes you must have eaten some fishes like you have the mackerel prawns are not fishes they are invertebrates okay prawns crabs cannot be classified in fishes so we have rohu katla heard of them which are the seahorse seahorse is a fish shark these are the different examples of fishes next we move on to amphibians amphi means both can you tell me why this terminology is used for them what is so both about them both kya so they are able to live on both land as well as water okay it's not like they can just go in water like how a crocodile does they must complete a part of their life cycle in water okay and then they come out of water it works like that that's why they are called as amphibians they live in both land they live in both water and on land clear next the fish's body was covered with scales is their body also covered with scales to nahi their body is moist and smooth moist smooth and in fact they use it for breathing for exchange of gases imagine going out going uh, sending out carbon dioxide from the body okay and taking in oxygen from the moist skin even earthworm does that right used for breathing so like i said it it has to complete its parts part of uh, its life cycle inside water and then only it can come out of the water so the eggs itself are laid in the water by the female frog once the eggs hatch what comes out is not a frog okay an example of an amphibian is a frog what comes out of those eggs is not a frog but what will come out is small things froglets they are called as tadpoles eggs hatch and from the hatched things come out the eggs are laid in water they will hatch in water and out will come some things which are called as tadpoles the tadpoles will look something like this right so they are aquatic they are aquatic only they are in water only they will have gills for breathing because they are in water and then these tadpoles then mature their tail will become smaller 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 they are going to develop uh, they are going to uh, grow limbs and eventually they will form a frog adult frog so the adult frog will not have these gills they will instead have lungs for breathing so tadpole breathes under water through gills and the adults breathe on the land using lungs the moist skin is used by the frog under water and outside land out on the land as well even on land 
also on land. Do they lay eggs or do they give birth to young ones? So they lay eggs. Here only. Lay eggs. Some examples of amphibians include frogs. Who else? Have you heard of salamanders? Salamanders. Then toad. Newt. Etc. Next, let us learn about reptiles. What kind of animals are included in reptiles? So, all the creeping crawlies. Okay. You have examples like the snake. Most popular reptile. Then your lizard. Who else? Tortoise. Turtles. Crocodile. All these are reptiles. Now you will say turtle lives in water, no? So why is it not an amphibian? So the thing is, the amphibians have to stay in water for a part of their life cycle. When they come out of the eggs, they have to spend their life in water. Okay, and then they can come out of the water. Both land as well as water. But in reptiles, that is not the case. If you keep a reptile for its entire life outside water, it will survive. Okay? It's not like it has to go in water. For example, the crocodile going in water, it goes there just to catch its prey. Okay? The eggs and all are laid outside water only by the crocodile or the turtle. There, uh, the hatchlings will be roaming on the land only for a period of time. Okay? Before they enter into water. So that is the main difference between amphibians and reptiles. Amphibians have to spend a part of their life cycle in water. The eggs are laid in water. Fine. But in case of the reptiles, they can be entirely terrestrial. They live on land. Terrestrial. Hmm? They lay eggs only. The eggs are laid on land not in water clear next the amphibians body was nice and smooth isn't it but their body has very uh, thick scaly scutes okay for example you have seen the crocodile how their body is covered with uh, scutes, thick scutes they are called. Then even in the tortoise you know it has a tough shell. The snake you have seen what a rough layer it has. Body covered with with scutes. These are dry scales. Next reptiles are four limbed animals. They have two limbs in front, two limbs behind have four feet except for snake so that is all that we learnt about reptiles moving on to the next ones that is birds birds are also called as aves they have a pair of wings to fly they also have two limbs in front, two limbs behind, right? The front limbs that they have are modified into wings. Front limbs modified to wings. For what? For flying. So they have several adaptations in them which help them to fly. One important adaptation is that their body is very light because their bones are special types of bones which are called as spongy bones. They hardly have any substance. They are very light without any weight. Body is light. Why is it lightweight? Is it necessary that it be lightweight? Of course. It helps them, it will help them to fly due to spongy bones.
spongy bones are also called as pneumatic bone. This is a term. Body is covered with feathers. which also helps to keep their body lightweight. And if you see all these vertebrates that we have learned so far, the fish's body was covered with scales. The amphibian's body was moist and smooth, covered with slimy like substance. Next comes the reptiles. Their body was covered with thick scales, also called the scutes. Then in birds, their body is covered with feathers. And then in mammals that we will be studying in some time, their body will be covered with hair. So all these distinctive characteristics you must study about all the animals. Next, do they give birth to young ones or they lay eggs? They lay eggs. Also another important point that I would like to mention is that all the vertebrates that we have seen so far, the fishes, right? Then the amphibians, the reptiles and all the invertebrates that we saw so far, all of them, their body the body's temperature will alter according to the environment that they are in. However, in case of the birds and the mammals, their body is going to maintain a constant temperature. But in case of the birds and the mammals, their body temperature is going to be constant. It's not going to change according to the environment that they are in. Okay. So birds and mammals together, they are called as warm blooded animals and the rest all of them the invertebrates fishes amphibians and reptiles they are all cold blooded animals so these are said to be warm blooded animals do all birds fly now, most of them fly but there are some birds that are unable to fly for example penguin do you know there is a bird Yes, it's a bird that cannot fly, right? Apart from that ostrich, how big and heavy it is, how will it be able to fly? It's, it will have feather, it will have wings, but they will be very, very reduced and redundant type. On the contrary, in uh, penguin, you will see that their uh, so-called wings have been so reduced like this. They have been turned into flippers for uh, helping it to swim in water, isn't it? So these birds, which cannot fly, they are called as flightless birds. Flightless birds will be usually heavy and very reduced type of wings they will have. Examples include ostrich, then we have penguin, herd of emu, kiwi is another example. These are flightless birds. Finally, we learn about the mammals. Okay, first things first. What are the different animals that are included under mammals? You have the cat, dog, you name it. Tiger, lion, all these animals that are covered with hair. Okay, they are called as mammals. Who else? Monkey. How about humans? Humans are also mammals. So all these animals, their body is covered with, is covered with hair. This is their main, this is their major characteristic. Apart from that, what are the other characteristics that the mammals have? They are the only ones in this lineage of animals that we saw. They are the ones that give birth to young ones. Give birth to young ones and feed them also milk give birth to young ones they give birth to young ones and also feed them feed them milk the females will feed them milk from the mammary glands the female breasts have mammary glands in them that produce milk okay so since they are fed from mammary gland that's why they are called as mammals they will give birth to young ones no laying eggs yeah there are some exceptions i will tell you about them they give birth to young ones no eggs and then they feed their young ones milk from the mammary glands their body is covered with hair 
how do they breathe they breathe through lungs they will be terrestrial they will breathe through lungs like i told you all the mammals give birth to young ones there are few exceptions to this rule the only exception is this mammal called as duck billed platypus and spiny anteater what do they do so they they will lay eggs however whatever kids come out they will feed them milk okay they will feed them milk from the mammary glands itself so they are mammals only the only egg laying mammals clear they have they are four limbed bat is an exceptional mammal that can fly then dolphin whales are exceptional mammals that can swim that are un that stay under water bat is an exceptional mammal that can fly it's not a bird then let us also include whale then dolphin also over here because all these are mammals whale and dolphin they are not fishes although they stay under water they are mammals they give birth to young ones and feed them the bat although it can fly it is not a bird its body is covered with hair it gives birth to young ones and feed them so they are also mammals clear and just like what we discussed mammals are mammals are warm blooded animals so let us make a note over here in vertebrates vertebrates then who else the fish amphibians and the reptiles are known as cold blooded animals because their blood is cold freezing is it no their body temperature changes with the environment that they are in okay bahar ka temperature 25 if it is 25 degrees celsius the internal body temperature will also be 25 degrees celsius 30 degrees celsius outside temperature their body temperature is also going to become 30 degrees but ours if our uh, if the temperature outside is 25 degrees celsius will our body temperature also become 25 degrees celsius no it will be 37 degrees only right so we are able to maintain a constant body temperature but these guys are not able to so they are called as cold blooded animals and us that is who us birds and mammals they are called as warm blooded animals because we can maintain a constant body temperature so with that we have completed with the study of invertebrates and the five different types of vertebrates so with that we have completed with the classification of animals in the animal kingdom in the next class we're going to study the different adaptations of animals